Hello people, buckle up your bells because today we have posture. So teaching postures can be sometimes counterproductive because uh, people think that uh, behind uh, a posture there is a determined uh, movement that it will come. Yes, postures can show a style behind it, but it uh, can be misleading if we don't know how to read them. If you check inside the treatises of Verdadera Destreza, you will see many stiff fighters, like reminding me to Lego figures. And this is totally a misconception, it's not like that. And actually, if you read um, uh, Loren Derrada, he will tell you that that you can place your feet one or two feet away from each other and he has uh, different degrees of profile that you can show in your posture which uh, I might talk in uh, another video. At the end of the third book of Nobleza de la Espada, Lorenz de Rada talks about this position called Bella Española with the weight placed at the back Foot. He uses it against uh, pushy fencers like the rhomboid leg positions of French or the very pushy powerful fighters of uh, Italian style that they are like the lemmings, they just go forward in this position uh, and those times it might be really helpful uh, because it places uh, your, your principal objective away from your enemy but nowadays we see that you are exposing a lot the leg and people are not scared of the sword even if you place the sword in front of their face if they want to hit the leg they will go towards the leg even if they get stabbed in, in, in the neck as, as we see it many times sadly in competitions so the posture that I like to, to use or uh, readapt while during the combat it's the one of Manuel de Brea Remember, it's a transitional small sword slash rapier, and he places the legs a bit uh, one away the other with a weight in the middle. The legs a bit flexed, and uh, that helps you to change the balance of your weight uh, depending on the situation. Remember always to place back your leg uh, if, it's, uh, if it's if it's gonna be attacked by your opponent. And by default, I always say that the front foot should be pointing always at the opponent. As well, from my last video, you remember that we have three angles of the sword position. 70% of the time, for example, I go in a very relaxed position of a kind of obtuse angle when I'm not engaged. So when I'm static and I'm not engaged, uh, you will see many times putting my hand on the height of the chest, okay, or, or around this place. This is following the doctrine of uh, Johann George Pasha, a German master, or you can also see it in uh, Henri saint okay, a French master. The, putting the hand here, it allows you to use it when after parrying the blade of the other one, and, and you can move aside the blade if it's not moving, of course. And also it's easier to, once you parry it, enter to do the disarm. Okay. Remember that uh, all the positions that we do, we should always in movement uh, to not allow our enemy to, to focus in one particular flaw in our defense and change angulations. Also, Keep your shoulders straight and breathe. So that's all for today. Uh, in the next video we will do steps. Thank you for all your comments, insults and personal attacks.